Hey everyone, my name is Gary Blackwood. Welcome back to the vlog. We've got a zillion hands to get through today, so we're going to get straight into the action. We're starting off by playing 5 5 10, but a much bigger game is going to pop off later on today. On to the very first hand of the day, and the $20 straddle is on, and that straddler is my buddy Will, all the way from England, in his first ever hand, in his first ever game in LA. And I've told him to stick the straddle on. I am under the gun, plus one, and look down at ace five of diamonds. I raise it on up to $50. The big blind calls, and Will puts in the score squeeze to $275. I know he's just doing this because he wants to win his very first hand. Well, not on my watch. I move all in for $1,500. He laughs and folds. I, of course, have to show the ace five suited and he reaches back and shows me ace five offsuit. Great fun here today. And up next is a very wholesome moment. There's an unknown American guy in the game. He wins an all in preflop with pocket aces versus pocket kings. He then puts a $25 chip in one hand and a $100 chip in the other and asks the dealer to pick a hand and that's her tip. I actually don't know. Yeah. 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 Oh, no way. She picks the hundred dollar hand and everyone cheers. Really lovely stuff. I'm pretty sure he would have given her the hundred anyway, but I guess we'll never know. Moving on now, the twenty dollar straddle is still on. The button makes it fifty dollars to go. I'm in the middle blind with eight seven suited and make the call. The big blind calls and then the straddle squeezes to two hundred and eighty dollars. The bank gets out of the way, and it's probably not a profitable call here, but my hand is just too pretty, so I decide to peel the big blind folds. We go heads up to queen, 6-5 with one club. I check with the intention of check jamming, but the straddle checks back. The turn is an eight. I've now got second pair. Once again, it goes check, check, and on the offsuit five river, I decide to go for some value by betting $230, trying to get a crying call from ace king, maybe ace five, but unfortunately, he does make the fold. Still, it's a nice pot coming my way. That straddle makes everything bigger and things are about to get even bigger in the next hand when I put on the double straddle to $40. My buddy Ludo is one seat to my left and not to be outdone, he puts on the $80 straddle. Casual 5, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80 hand going on just now. Can I pick up a monster? Nope, I get 10, 7 off suit. The small blind here is going to limp in for $80. It folds to me and I decide to complete. Ludo checks and we go three ways to King Jack 9 with two hearts. Good old double belly buster for me. And I decide to take a stab here for $150. Ludo makes the call, as does the small blind. Gonna do something a little different here and tell you what they've both got. Ludo has got 10-9 offsuit, and the small blind has got ace-10 offsuit. To the turn we go, of course, it's a queen. I thought this was a great turn, but obviously not. Fortunately, the small blind has only got $750 here. We end up getting it all in on the turn. No miracle ace for us for the chop. The poker god should have rewarded us for putting the double and triple straddle on, and instead we get stacked. I'm starting to think these poker gods don't actually exist, to be honest. Still, I top up to the table max of 1500 and next orbit I'm in the $80 straddle and look down at king six of hearts. The button makes it $220 to go. The middle blind calls and I make the call as well. Three ways we go to the flop of king, queen, four. Really happy to make top pair in this big bloated pot but when the button bets out for $330 and the middle blind calls I'm really not loving life at all. Still I've got top pair. I'm not going anywhere. I make the call to the turn. It's another king. We can't all have a king here fellas. It checks to the button and again he bets this time for $760. The middle blind makes a quick fold and I only have $880 total at this point so it is effectively an all-in. Now I've played a bit with a button and he's a very competent semi-pro who is never going to be randomly blasting off here. I take about 30 seconds and sigh and stick the rest in. The button sighs, calls off for the last $120 and says that he's got absolutely nothing. He was actually a little annoyed at me for taking 20 or 30 seconds and looking back I think he's got a point. I'm never folding this hand. I should just stick it in after a few seconds. I don't get to see the button's hand but apologies to him if he's watching for this semi-knit roll. It wasn't malicious, I was just being a bit of a nit. A full double up for me here, very swingy start but I am now in Profitville, hoping to keep that going when up next I'm in the $40 straddle and finally wake up with a monster in the form of pocket queens. EP is raised to $105, the small blind calls, as does the big blind and then I put in the squeeze to $375. EP gets out of the way and both players in the blinds make the call. Three ways to the flop we go, it is a very dreamy 10 9 3 rainbow i bet out for 475 dollars unfortunately both players are gonna make the fold disappointing neither of them had flopped a pair but still it's a nice
nice pot coming my way. I can't complain too much. Up about 1k or so as our new game opens up. We're moving across to play 10-10 with a $20 big blind ante and plenty of straddles as well. This game is going to be stacked with Hustler Legends. We've got Mike X, Israeli Ron, DK, even Nick Vertucci is playing as well. A super fun lineup and a much deeper game. Everyone buying in here for at least $4,000 and ready to battle. First hand of note, the $20 straddle is on. I make it 100 to go with pocket nines in the cutoff. DK calls in the small blind, a local pro makes it 500 to go in the big blinds. I make the call, the small blind gets out of the way and we go heads up to queen, queen six rainbow. The big blind bets out for $325, very easy call for me. To the turn, it's an offsuit three and he bets again this time for $800. I'm not loving life here, but given we're in position, I decide I have to call. To the river, it's an eight that looked so much like a nine. Really exciting for a moment, but unfortunately not the nine I was hoping it was. My opponent unloads the clip. He fires that third barrel for $2,000. Now, I've only got 2400 at this point, so it's not enough to put me all in. I thought long and hard about what to do, and eventually I decided to randomize and call half the time and fold half the time. The RNG lands on call, so I make the call, and he turns over. Ah, oh, he's got king-queen suited. Nice hand. This player is very aggressive in the right spot, so I really don't mind calling sometimes here, but it still sucks to lose such a big pot. But it's a big game with lots of straddling going on, so plenty of time to win it back. Next up, Nick Vertucci puts on the $80 straddle and I throw out the 160 hoping he's going to turn and look at me and say OMG we must get you on the stream. He doesn't even look up from his phone. Thankfully though the $320 straddle is going on. Just your casual 10, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, 320. Oh and don't forget the $20 big blind ante as well. What's better? I look down at pocket jacks. What a spot here. It falls right to the small blind who open raises to $1,400. What is happening in this hand? I am dreaming of Vegas and the fucking Mirage as I announced that I am all in for $3,900 total. The $320 straddle doesn't snap fold. He actually laughs, shakes his head, and after a minute, he calls it off for $3,200. The small blind immediately tells us that he's got a bad hand, but he's priced in and calls it off as well. I immediately turn over my jacks. The 320 straddle shakes his head and doesn't show, and the small blind has got King 9 offsuit, a pot worth over $11,000 here. Dealer, please pick me. No sub request balance this week, but let's just take a moment to appreciate this. This is a quadruple straddle hand. I'm all in for an 11.5k pot with pocket jacks on the other side of the world to where I normally live. Where else can you get this kind of peak content on YouTube? So if you're not subbed to the channel, do me a favor, take a minute and click that sub button. Back to the hand. Let's see if we can hold here. I have a strappy hand. Okay. I have one of those. Queen. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I think I'm out of balance on the second yeah, one. No, you're not. Holy oh, shit. shit. Yeah. No, you're not. I couldn't fold one. Of course, you have to call. Price then. I haven't lost many five figure pots in my life, but out of all the ones that I have lost, that one probably stung the most. I do absolutely agree with the small blind though. When he raises and gets two shoves, he's probably priced in. Plus, I love the gamble that he's shown, so absolutely no issues from me. Basically stacked twice in the first hour here. Are we done? Absolutely not. I pull out another 4k and the grind goes on. Next up, I'm in the small blind with Ace Queen offsuit. Israeli Ron has opened $100 in the hijack. The button puts in the three bet to $400 and I decide to get a little funky here and cold call the re-raise. Ron comes along as well. We go three ways to Queen. Four deuce rainbow. For those that don't know, Ron's favorite hand is Queen deuce. He absolutely loves it. So I have got the fear big time on this flop. It checks to the button who fires out $600. Easy call for me with my top pair top kicker and Ron makes the call as well. Big pot brewing again here as the turn is an offsuit seven. I check, Ron checks and the button checks as well. Very confident I've got the best hand now, ready to bet every river in the deck but when the ace peels off, I decide to check. The button is going to have plenty of ace king, ace jack type hands that could have just made top pair and he could have some bluffs as well on this scary river card. Ron can even have some top pairs or some queen deuces in his range so I decide to check with the intention of check jamming. Ron checks as well and unfortunately Unfortunately, the button checks back. Disaster to see it check through, but when Ron turns over seven deuce for a worse two pair, just shoot me in the head. I mean, I can't complain. I've just sucked out on the river for a 3k pot, but if only I shoved the river myself. Ah, well, first big 
good part of this game coming my way, really can't complain. Next up, the stand-up game is on. We're playing it sitting down. This is the very first hand of the stand-up game. I opened under the gun with Ace-5 Osu. I think in hindsight, this is just a little bit too loose for a splashy game like this, even with the stand-up game meta going on. I get three calls and see about $225 on 983 all spades and take it down. As you guys know, I have never lost the stand-up game in my life and happy to keep my streak still going here. Next orbit stand-up game still on. I open King Four of Spades in the hijack to $100. Again, a little loose, but not disastrous. The button makes a call, as does the small blind. Both these guys still not sitting down. We go three ways to queen, queen, deuce, rainbow. Small blind checks, and I should just see bet here, but I decide to check, as does the button. The turn is a rainbow four, giving me second pair. Should probably bet to protect, but I decide to check, as does the button. To the river, it's a three, and again, I decide to check. The button now decides to take a stab for $500. It falls to me, and this is the beauty of the stand-up game. Surely he would bet his straight draws or his middling pocket pairs before now. So I decide this is just an attempt to steal and make the call. He turns over. Oh, he's got pocket threes. Ouch. I think my river call is fine, but I really should just bet the flop or bet the turn. Moving on, the $20 straddle is still on here, and I am in the big blind with ace, five of diamonds. The small blind calls. I raise to $100. The straddle calls and the small blind calls as well. We go three ways to ace, 10, six, rainbow. I decide to see bet here for $150. The straddle calls, as does the small blind. To the turn, it is a king. I check and the straddle bets out for $350. The small blind gets out of the way and I think maybe we can just get away from this here. Tough to find a lot of bluffs for our opponent, but I decide to call and it goes from bad to worse as the queen rolls off on the river. I check and when I face a bet of $1,000, I just let it go, wishing I'd find some discipline and fold it on the turn. Not running well at all today here, but grinding away, lots of small to medium pots not going my way, which adds up very quickly in a big game like this. Case in point, I'm on the button here with ace three of clubs and raised to $100. The small blind calls and then the big blind squeezes to $525. Four betting sometimes, but I decide to call this time. We go heads up to a flop of 873 rainbow. The small blind checks and I'm stabbing here sometimes, but decide to check back this time. The turn is a 10 and he bets out for $900 and I just let my hand go. It's been a bit of a grind today. Stuck a chunk at this point, but trying to stay positive. And when I pick up jacks in the small blind, I'm hoping they'll get me something going today. Mike X has raised to $100 in the hijack. Nick makes it 350 to go on the button and again I decide to cold call. I don't think cold calling preflop versus three bets is a great strategy overall but there's definitely a time and a place for it and I think this is a fine spot to do so. Mike X is either really strong here or he's sensing weakness because he then makes it $1,200 to go. Nick decides to make the call and I think overall I've played well enough today without spewing but I decide to call again preflop here and I think this is a big mistake. I should either just shove or fold at this point and I definitely think just folding my hand is the right play given the action. Still, it's done now and we go three ways to a flop of queen 6-4. Mike rips it in for $2,500. Nick makes the call and I've got a very clear fold, which I do finally make. Mike has got pocket kings and Nick has got ace queen. Mike wins both runouts. Cruelly enough though, the first turn was a jack. I should have rage spike called and demanded to go one time. In all seriousness, this is a bit of a misstep here, but I give myself a shake and get focused and despite being down about 10k, there's still still a chance I can get out of it in a game like this. Next up, the stand-up game is back on and I'm in the big blind with 7-6 offsuit. The button opens to $100. The small blind calls and I call as well. All three of us yet to win a hand, so we're all still involved in the stand-up game. And we see a flop of 8-7-5 with two clubs. The button is going to see about here for $200. Nick gets out of the way in the small blind and only I make the call. The turn is an offsuit 10. I check and the button decides to bet again for $500. Really not a great spot, but I can still have the best hand and I do have the open open-ended straight draw and the stand-up game is on so it should be barreling a little wider so I call again hoping to improve but the eight rolls off on the river we check it down he turns over king 10 offsuit for turned top pair another pot not coming my way and I'm really starting to feel the frustration thankfully I was able to win a small pot to keep my stand-up game streak alive onto our final hand of the day I'm in the cutoff with ace queen offsuit and raise it on up to $75 the button calls he's won all the money today by smashing every flop relentlessly and the big blind squeezes to $300. I decide to make the call, as does the button. We go three ways to queen, seven deuce with two diamonds. A good start here with top pair, top kicker. And the big blind is going to bet out here for $400. I decide to just call, and then the button raises to $1,200. The big blind folds, and I decide to just call, get it in on non-diamond turns. The turn is an offsuit jack, and sure enough, when I check, he puts me all in for my last $2,700. It's a bit of a gross spot, and I thought about it long and hard and very nearly went back 
on my original plan and folded, but I decided to sigh, make the call. We agree to run it twice. And as the dealer is about to deal the first river, he turns over his hand and shows me that I've got precisely 0% equity. I sigh and muck my hand. I decide that that is going to do it for me today. I tap the table, wish everyone luck, heading home to cry myself to sleep. Just kidding, of course, but also not really. All right, troops, that is going to do it for this week. I lost $16,600, and as a result, I am wearing this t-shirt. Seems very fitting. Uh, yeah, I don't think I played that well in hindsight. I wasn't willing off every hand, but I think I could have played a bit better. I uh, certainly didn't run the best, and I uh, could have saved myself some money uh, in certain spots. But it's just the way it goes. Sometimes you can't win all the time. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you could click that sub button, I'd be ever so grateful. Slowly catching up on Brad. Uh, yeah, until next time, guys and girls, take it easy.